alhamdulillah reminder on this path of, of ishq and love to the Divine, the Presence and the symbol of the flame and that love is like a fire and that fire burns very hot and as a result the burning in life and testing and difficulties and everything that's around. So means that is a, a sign of that ishq, so we're talking about the fire, we talk about the secrets of ta'seen, the secrets of yaseen and always a reminder that as we are in that journey that Allah is, is teaching us that this ishq and this love of Divine Presence is a flame and any common sense teaches us that fire is hot and when it gets very hot it begins to burn, means that's the testing, the difficulty in our lives and people are quick to want to get out of the fire think that, oh I can blame my testing on my path, I can blame my difficulties on my path, I can blame uh, everything on my spirituality when it's a love from Allah The path only teaches us that we're on this direction towards ishq and love. The path is not causing the difficulty. It's Allah has written a destiny for everyone and everyone has a unique path to the Divine, the Presence. The tariqahs come to teach, they stand on the side and remind all those whom are flowing. Now when you go to the grocery store or any store you hear on the loudspeaker, thank you for coming, please wear your mask and keep six feet of distance. <laughs> It's a repeat message, message just continuously repeating, that's for dunya. The turuqs they don't cause your path, they guide people on the path. They're not the cause, they can't claim that type of power, this, this power is for Allah So they don't cause people's path, they teach them about their path like that loudspeaker that you're walking a unique path. Whatever Allah has destined for each individual servant that is their trail all the way to that fire. They're in that fire as a matter of fact, it's a trail to the Divine, the Presence and the whole way is inside of that flame. And what Allah is trying to teach us the reality of ishq and love, the dunya has a different understanding. Dunya thinks that love is something peaceful and great and everything should be so exciting like uh, an ocean with beautific views and that should be love and if I find a way towards God I'll, I'll find this beautific ocean of uh, immense reality just sitting there on the side of a beach. But no, Allah says, no. The real, the real ishq, the real love from Allah is a flame. And take your life into the understanding of that flame, if it's real, if that ishq is real it's a flame and it burns very hot and there is no way out of it and whatever the fate of the believer is they face it. So this dunya is opposite and anyone who goes to therapy in this dunya if not trained by the people of the heavens what happens? They come and try to blame everything but themselves. So they go to therapist and therapist says, oh it must be your path is incorrect. You should find a path that more like an ocean peaceful and loving and kind. And the only time that happens is if you surrender your way and follow shaitan because this dunya is meant to be like hell for the believers. If anyone signed up thinking it was going to be heaven on earth, they're in the wrong location. Heaven is above us in the heavens and paradise is there and for the believers this dunya become like a fire for them. 
And if they're doing it right, they're feeling the flame and they feel the burn of this Divine Ish. So when they have difficulty at work and this addresses all the emails and everybody's concerned and they're all the same. Each one has a different variation but all the same, my job I'm being bothered, everybody at work is difficult. Well it's not paradise and everybody doesn't come and, and go and give you fruit, it's done your work, that's all it's going to be is difficult. Doing your relationships going to be difficult because everyone is in their own fire, in their own testing, in their own difficulty. And there are two people share one path, everyone testing each other by the other. So even within a household five people, five paths, everyone has five graves. And each one is testing the other person's path. So our life once we truly acknowledge and realize, oh the shaykh is talking you know like mystical fires and this ishq and this love but no it's actually a real flame. And Allah wants us to understand the reality of love that whatever you've been taught about love and ishq from shaitan that everything has to be great, everything going to be peaceful, everything going to be of the serenity is not true. The virtue of this dunya is that Allah doesn't want it that way. He wants the fight and He wants the struggle and to Allah is the victory. So that in every aspect of our life, life is hard, work is hard, that's the way Allah wants it. Relationships are hard, that's the way Allah wants it. The family is hard, that's the way Allah wants it. The kids don't listen, definitely that's the way Allah wants it. There's no home where children listen, you're not in bihish, you're in dunya and dunya is like a fire. So then all these emails only signify in a doctor's office because the shaykhs are like doctors that you really probably haven't been listening to the talks. And then when you hear the talks you think of them maybe it's a philosophy or maybe he's talking about somebody else but what he's really talking is for me. That each talk is for each person's individual path because each person understands the difficulty they have. So that's when patience and faith come into play. For one, do we understand the path? And that we're walking into a fire so tonight's notes when people go back and try to make notes and comments, my life is entering into God's flame, God's eternal flame, Allah's eternal flame of love. Not the love that shaitan taught us on earth and this love it's a flame and it burns, it's hot and it burns. If you feel the burn then you're doing something right. If you feel like your life is on an ocean in, in Hawaii and everything's fantastic then you did something wrong. So then psychologists have come out with a report for these billionaires who have everything. And you know the biggest sickness that the billionaires have is boredom because they did everything, they have everything, they don't struggle for anything because they work with shaitan and as a result they have boredom, they're just bored. They can do anything they want, every time they want, whenever they want. But when Allah loves a servant and wants them to reach His paradise and His Divine the Presence, so now I make this dunya because I don't like this dunya for you, I didn't send that there for you to love that. I'm a jealous, Allah has a, has a Divine jealousy which you can't say Allah has any attributes like that but it's for us to understand that Allah has a qirat that, you are made for my paradise Yahu, why are you enjoying dunya so much? So for the love and for ishq and those whom He loves this dunya becomes difficult for them, continuous sadness, continuous heartbreak, continuous difficulty within their heart, within the people around and all of the 
the, the students around in difficulties and they're throwing their difficulties onto the shaykh. And what Allah wants for us to understand is this path of Divine love, this path of Divine ishq is a fire and it burns. And if you feel the burn you're doing something correct. That's why then your skills and what you understood from your tariqah should have been your life skills. So they go to therapists, they say, well, oh this your life is all based on that path, oh leave your religion, your community and isolate. Well that's the satanic understanding so that to get people alone and then begin to destroy their minds. But what Allah asked is that hold tight to the rope, means don't break away from the shaykhs and the community, you hold tight to that. And then when you go back and look at your notes is that the shaykh prepared me. For this fire of life of mine are a series of thorns and every time I, I gr grab something that I think I'm going to have a relief, I grab it and there's another thorn that just pokes and punctures the skin and makes every type of difficulty. And what sets the believer apart and the one who has faith and sabr and iman in which Allah dress them with these characteristics. That's why you have to write because you're not going to get it. When Allah loves you and you want to know how you're doing, because some people may ask the shaykh and they won't believe how they're doing. But if you want to know how are you doing with Allah if He was to grade you, well very simple. You say, what's the best character and then see how close you are to that. So what's the best character that Allah want for those whom He gives them a beaten path? Path of continuous obstacles is they walk upright, they're content with Allah and Allah calls them sabirin, that they have sabr and patience. And we talked before sabr jameen, it's a beatific attribute in which Allah is very satisfied and loves that attribute. That what he wants from the servant that they have patience and as a result gives them beautiful jamali tajalli. So every time they hit that thorn and their life becomes a difficult sadness, crying, whatever is happening to them because if they use their sabr they don't react. They don't scream, they don't speak vulgarities, they don't exemplify a satanic character. They represent the heavenly character because anyone who has these bizarre characteristics it's not from a heavenly person. So when they exhibit satanic characteristics then we immediately can know all oh, is not pleased with that. So anything that represents something other than the paradise reality Allah is not pleased with it. If Allah is not pleased then you are not receiving the tajallis of Allah's rida and satisfaction. So we go back and you do your self-analysis and say, I have to change. Every time I hit the thorn in life whatever it is, whatever sparks your, your ability to go out of control and whatever difficulty comes in life. Allah wants sabr jameel where the servant is patient, is calm, has good characteristics and as a result Allah dresses their soul with beautific lights and beautific fragrances. And as a result of that dress they're rising higher and higher. It wasn't meant to make it everything easy and everything the way you want and everything perfectly the way that you thought it was going to be. Because it's not a path where it lays out perfectly for you, but Allah has a path filled with obstacles. And that's why people are cleansing each other and the whole family can be cleansing each other. Maybe only one of them understood and the whole family is terrorizing that one. And that one is receiving all the tajallis that Allah wants to dress upon them, that's their grave, that's what they'll receive as an award. Every time they come to their heart to run Allah is teaching from your sabr and from your patience you should know that when you hit the thorn you're closer to the rose. 
if you stay consistent with your good character that every time you hit that thorn Allah sends the fragrance of the rose into your soul, what? Means you draw closer to Prophet Every time, every time heartbroken you are drawing closer, you begin to… F you smell the fragrance. Imagine those whom their hearts are open, what they see of the nearness and proximity to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Only by their patience. There's no other way, there's not a way that you pray and you get that. There's not a way that you can fast all the white nights, black nights and dark nights and every night that doesn't open that reality. Each has its own tajalli. The tajalli of your salah is one thing, the tajalli of your zakah, somebody say, oh I give blood donation but I have no sabr. Whether you receive the tajalli of your donation, no problem. But this of the khuluq and the character of rijal, now rijal can be a man or woman, just the person of maturity. Is that this is a fire, my path is a fire and it's all moving in directions on a broken road and every time this thorn comes to me and I'm just going to leave it. People think, I'll just walk away from the whole thing, I'll walk away from the path, I'll walk from testing, I'll walk away from my job, I'll walk away from everything. And Allah says, that's not the character, that's not the character. The character is to continue with the difficulty. And every time you hit the throne, the thorns and the difficulty, remember the fragrance of the rose is going to be dressing you. That's why the meditation is important, that's why the connection is important. If we didn't establish those, well you can imagine the first person who hits a thorn, ooh they're running out the door and you never see them again. And the one who's not doing the meditations correctly every time they hit a thorn you don't see them, they come back weeks later. If at ever because some thorns can be so big that they run and that's it. And they misunderstood this the Divine love, they thought that, oh I would come and everything would be laid out like a golden path and the shaykhs would make this dunya to be like a paradise for them. Why is that's a dajjal. Dajjal comes to the believer and offers them heaven. It's a hadith from Prophet that the dajjal will offer in his hand and say that this is paradise but know that it's jahannam. And then his aqeedah will teach you, oh watch out for jahannam. Then Prophet described, know that that's paradise. Whatever this dunya is telling you is jahannam, it's paradise. So they tell you why you have to have difficulty, why you have to look like this, why you have to struggle in this way, why you have to have good character. Just leave it. You go to a therapist, they say, leave it, don't talk to them, don't do like that, don't pray, don't, don't fast. So a reminder always for myself that we're talking big realities and I don't think most of us remember even the basics of the turuq. And that Allah is looking at, why you want to keep talking big things, big things, big things if people don't understand what sabr and what good character are. If they don't have patience and they don't have the ability to, to, to exhibit good characteristics then they're not understanding the fire and they thought the, that all this difficulty what Allah was going to give His paradise for free. Or Allah wants to see, I put you on every type of difficulty and you have to come out sweet, you have to come out fragrant, you have to come out positive and thankful. That, ya Rabbi alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah, that whatever you gave to me alhamdulillah, if it's coming short alhamdulillah it could be a lot worse. What you have from health alhamdulillah, what you don't have from health alhamdulillah it could be a lot worse. So our life is the struggle. So everybody now can go back and judge themselves. How much are you putting into the struggle? Do you always come out with good character, good language, good akhlaq? That you, you would be happy during your testing if the veil opened and you saw the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in front of you at that time? Or would you be ashamed? of how you react and, and the character that you have. And Allah doesn't care anything from this dunya. 
There is no excuse for anything, oh but this is this, oh but no, 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 Allah doesn't care for anything from this dunya. All Allah cares for is paradise realities. And that's all that's important in these trainings of akhlaq and character. In the time of Sayyidina Mahdi that's something different. There is a Khalifa, the Khalifa at that time will declare the, the decree from Allah and everybody will be responsible to obey that decree. But for now, no Khalifa on this earth. So these are only the schools of akhlaq and character hoping that they'll survive with good character to see the presence of Sayyidina Mahdi mm-hmm. And now more than ever, why? Because on every corner there's a new sickness coming out, Omni-Khan, <laughs> the all-present Khan. I think Khan means a lie. <laughs> when somebody cons you, yeah, omni is the all present <laughs> lying is present. <laughs> I'm sure they thought of a different meaning when they named that. But Allah makes the programming very nice and very sim- simple. If the other was a con, this is the omni con, the <laughs> all encompassing lie. <laughs> yeah. So all these things come out and uh, if the character is bad, how they're going to be protected? You know, they are, humans are their worst enemy. they not to worry about a devil on the outside coming to, to beat you, the devil's already inside people. When they hear these talks, if their character is not good and they're not exhibiting divinely characteristics of patience and beatific patience, beatific character, beatific word, beatific uh, fragrance coming from them then nothing to worry about the outside shaitan, your inner shaitan is so strong you don't need to see the outer shaitan. The inner shaitan has already overtaken your faculties. So every disease and virus comes here, immediately open the door and say, come on in, Ahlam wa sana, come on I already have this place, come on in. So even more than ever these practices, these trainings our defense, spiritual defense, physical dis- uh, de- defense and a mental defense. That when we have all of these characteristics then Allah begin to shield the believer. They don't need to be punished at the hands of people who have no mercy. If they punish themselves and they control their bad characteristics Allah dresses them with ridha and satisfaction, His Divine grace and mercy upon them. If they don't fix themselves, Allah sends an outside force to begin to fix and that's why you see all the difficulty in this world. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us with His Divine grace and inspire us and everybody can write on the mirror of their room, the love is a flame and it burns hot and it's all about, you know, what am I going to do in all of this burning? That my characteristic is all that Allah is looking to. My praying, it should have made me to have good character. My zakah should have definitely made me to have good character. My salawat, my zikr, my awrat should have made me to have good character. All of those and worshipness should have made me to have good characteristic. So don't be happy on the amal but you should be happy with the character because the amal and the actions and the usul should have brought about good character. If not then there's something lacking, maybe the prayers are not that sincere, maybe the zikrs are not that sincere, maybe the fasting is not that sincere. Because why aren't you becoming patient? That's, that's the tariqah answer, that's what tariqah teaches when they say, oh the shaykh says that the, the amads don't count. Of course they don't count. If in the end of the day Allah sees your character is horrific, screaming, yelling, shouting, screaming, what was the purpose then of all the prayers and the zakat and the hajj and all the salawat, whatever the person was doing? 
So the goal was the characteristics and the character of a Divinely servant. And that's what Allah pleased with, this is what Prophet teaching Adam and Rabbi fi ahsanu fi tahdeeb that I have been sent to perfect your character. Not perfect your salah, I want you to pray better than all the nations on, on God's creation or perfect your zakah that I want you to be the most generous, no other nations, other groups are more. That I want you to be the people who make the most for hajj, no but I, I, I won't, I came and Allah sent me to perfect the character of people. Why? Because with the good character every salah is beautific, every zakah is beautific, every fasting is beautific from a, a servant who reached the servanthood of Allah when they fast it's everything is beautific from them. We pray that Allah inspire us and open our hearts in these months to dress us from these blessings and protect us from the omnicon. <laughs> All these difficulties. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbina alameen. Bi rahmati Muhammadin Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.